Hello there, my name is Yorkie and welcome to the channel for what is the 16th episode of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Just before we get into the video that's going to give you all the juicy details in order to improve your lap times around this track, I just wanted to say if you're new to the channel and enjoying this in-depth track guide series then please consider subscribing to the channel, it will be very much appreciated and if you want to follow me on other social media pages my links are down in the description below. So for this 16th episode we are going to be tackling the Italian circuit Imola. The track's length is 3.05 miles which equates to 4.91 kilometers, has a total of 19 corners and has a medium to high downforce setup requirement with medium suspension. The key overtaking areas are going to be turns 2, turn 5, turn 7, turn 9, turn 14, turn 17 and also turn 18. We're going to kick this episode off by taking a look at the pit entrance slip road. This is roughly where you're going to be wanting to start braking for the pit entry, aiming to get the car slowed down by the pit speed limiter line that is at the end of the red and white echelon barrier that's there on the right hand side of the circuit. Once you get here, obviously activate the limiter and then when it comes to the exit, the pit speed limit endpoint is just after the elevated marshal hut and here you can deactivate that pit speed limiter and accelerate out of the pit lane out to towards the right hand side of the circuit heading down towards turn 2. So turn 1 is almost non-existent, it's a little left handed kink just after the start finish line so our first real breaking point is coming into turn 2. This is going to be our breaking point referencing the painted orange end of the barrier and the unpainted tarmac that's there on the right hand side of the circuit. We're going to be braking hard and shifting down into second gear before clipping our apex here on the inside kerb. The car that you're driving is going to determine as to how much off the inside of this corner you can take with those yellow turtle kerbs. Some cars will take the kerbs a little bit better than others, however in pretty much both the dry and also the wet conditions you can use this inside apex kerb. Immediately we then transition into turn 3 the following right hander. Again the car is going to determine how much on the inside you can take here. However, with these more aggressive yellow baguette curves, you generally want to be trying to avoid them in order to get a good power application to accelerate out through the exit of this corner and into the left hander of turn four. In both dry and wet conditions, again, you can use this inside curbing no problem. Transitioning between turn three and four is quite important. You don't want to run all the way out to the exit curb. Instead, place your car roughly about here. This should open up turn four a little bit more for you and allow you to take it full throttle. Coming through this fourth turn, you want to be apexing and clipping this inside curb just after the two yellow turtle curbs that's there. You should be in third gear, potentially shifting up into fourth. The curb is pretty smooth, you can use it in the dry conditions, however in the wet conditions you want to be a little bit more cautious with this curb as you don't want to hurt the traction coming out of the chicane. As for the actual exit of turn 4 and the exit of the chicane, we do have a serrated curb on the outside here with an additional FIA serrated curb. Use this to your full advantage in the dry conditions if you need to, however avoid it in the wet. You shouldn't need to worry about track limits coming off the exit and using this curb, however you obviously want to be avoiding running your outside wheels into that gravel as that's going to hurt your momentum off the corner. Next up we have the braking zone for turn 5 which is actually a very short braking zone. On the right hand side should be a 50 meter marker that should be roughly your reference point. Give a short sharp stab of the brake to slow the car down, drop it down into 4th maybe 3rd gear and turn the car in, aiming to hook up the apex just here after the two yellow turtle curbs on the inside. As stated here you can use the inside curb in both the dry and also wet conditions, again just like turn 2 be careful with the yellow turtle curbing here. We're going to sacrifice the exit of turn 5, hanging the car to the left hand side as much as possible, ready for the braking zone of the right hander of turn 6 that immediately follows. There's no real reference point here but as soon as you get the car straight, brake the car and slow it down into 2nd or 3rd gear and turn the car in, aiming to brush the inside apex curb. With this right hander you don't want to be taking too much of the inside curb as the exit does creep up on you and comes in quite tight, so clipping that inside turtle curb is probably going to unsettle the car and cause you to hesitate getting on the throttle through the exit, but if you do find yourself taking this curb you'll find to do it in both the dry and wet conditions. 
The exit to turn 6 is very similar to the exit of turn 4 with the double width FIA serrated curbing. Use this to your heart's content in the dry conditions, however avoid it in the wet conditions as it's a key traction zone and it will hurt your power application coming off the corner. Again, you're going to be fine here for track limits, however don't dip your outside wheels into the gravel as that will hurt your momentum on the run down towards turn 7. Our breaking point for this 7th turn is going to be here referencing the 50 meter board on the right hand side of the track. You're going to be braking hard and shifting down into 1st or 2nd gear depending on the gear ratios of the car that you are driving. You're going to be looking to hook up a late apex in the corner mainly focusing on the exit and trying to get a good drive coming up the hill. It's not necessarily important to clip the inside kerb at the apex. In the dry conditions it is fine to do so however I would take caution with it in the wet conditions as you could potentially hurt the traction coming off the corner. So again for the exit of turn 7 we have the double width FIA serrated curbing. We can use this fine no problem in the dry conditions however avoid dipping your wheels into the grass on the outside of the corner there and in the wet conditions we want to avoid running this wet and slippery curbing as that is going to hurt our power delivery and our run up the hill. So after turn 7 up the hill there is a tiny little right handed kink which is turn 8 and then we then come into the braking zone for turn 9. Our reference for the braking point is going to be the 50 meter board there on the right hand side of the track. We're going to turn the car in and the key to get this corner right is to be apexing just after the two yellow turtle curbs on the inside there. You want to be apexing this corner in third gear using this inside curb in both the dry and also the wet conditions. When coming out through the exit we again have the double width FIA serrated curbing. Out here we can use this in the dry conditions. Do take caution with it in the wet. Sometimes you can run this outside curb. Other times you may want to be a little bit more cautious and avoid running it. And then you also want to be careful with track limits out here making sure that you don't dip the wheels too far beyond the green and white curbing. Turn 10 is immediately after and is basically a continuation of turn 9. So we then come down the hill into the braking zone for turn 11. This is our braking point here referencing the 50 meter board there on the left hand side of the circuit. It's a short stab of the brake down into fourth gear, chuck the car in and we're going to be looking to clip our apex around about here. We only really want to brush the curb, you don't want to be taking too much in either the dry or the wet conditions as ideally what we wanted to be doing is settling the car as quickly as possible for the next braking zone for the following right hander. There isn't much room between the two corners so once you basically get the car settled and in a straight line you're going to be braking hard and shifting down into second gear. We're then going to turn the car in and clip our apex on the inside kerb around about here. There is a nice bit of compression here as the car starts to go up the hill so try and use that to your advantage and use the inside kerb in both the dry and wet conditions. As we power out the exit of turn 12 we come through turn 13 which is almost pretty much non-existent. What you want to be doing here is running the FIA serrated curbing that is there on the left hand side of the circuit. Use this in the dry conditions however avoid it in the wet and then when it comes to track limits what you want to avoid doing is dipping the left hand wheels over the edge of the green and white painted serrated curbing as doing so will invalidate your lap. At the end of the straight at the top of the hill is the chicane of turns 14-15. Our braking point is at the start of the curbing that is there on the left hand side of the track about 60 meters before the turn. You're going to be braking hard shifting the car down into either first or second gear depending on the car's gear ratios and then you're going to thread the car between the two yellow sausage curbs at either corner. In turn 14 use the curbing in both the dry and wet conditions. In turn 15 the left hander coming out the exit of the chicane use it in the dry condition however do take caution in the wet. Some cars will allow you to take these curves a little bit more aggressively than others which will help you save a little bit of time but getting too greedy with the curves could potentially unsettle the car which could cost you time so there is a balance to be found here. On the exit of the chicane is again the double width FIA serrated curbing and then beyond that is three turtle curbs. When it comes to track limits again you can run the green and white curbing no problem however if you dip your right handed wheels beyond that you will see your lap either being invalidated or potentially you get in yourself a track limits warning. And when it comes to using the curbs in the various conditions use these in the dry obviously don't exceed track limits and then avoid them in the wet conditions as these will be wet and slippery. 
As we run down the hill and pass underneath the bridge, we go for a right-handed kink of turn 16, and we then come into the braking zone for turn 17. It's a tricky braking zone as it is downhill, however, once we get the car pretty much straight, we want to be braking hard in and around the 100 meter board and shifting the car down into second or first gear, depending on the car's gear ratios. We're going to turn the car in and look to hook up the inside curbing here. You can use this apex curb to your heart's content in both the dry and wet conditions, just don't throw the car aggress too aggressive aggressively over it as that could potentially unsettle it and then when it comes to the exit again we got the double width serrated curbing on the outside there we don't need to worry about track limits here as there is a gravel trap on the outside and we obviously want to be avoiding that run this curb in the dry conditions avoid it in the wet and then it's one final short stab of the brake for the last proper corner pretty much just before we get to the end of the curbing on the right hand side it's just going to be a short dab of the brake and then turn the car in we want to be apexing on the curbing just here after the two yellow turtle curbs that are there on the inside as clipping those is going to bounce and unsettle the car and delay us getting on the throttle we can use this inside curb in the dry and also the wet conditions with pretty much no issue and then we get to the exit of turn 18 and again we've got the double width FIA graded serrated curb here beyond that is the gravel trap obviously don't dip your wheels out there we don't need to worry about track limits as just running the curb is not going to give you a warning or invalidate your lap here so use this exit curb in the dry conditions however do avoid it in the wet as it'll be slippery and it'll hurt your traction coming off the corner as that will in turn then negatively impact our run down towards turn 19 the little right-handed kink just before the start finish line so now that we've completed a breakdown of the lap, let's jump on board and piece it all together at racing speed. So now that we set a pretty decent lap around Imola, I just want to finish off the episode by saying please be mindful of what your car and car setup is capable of. Some cars will be able to brake a little bit later than others, some cars will be able to take curves better than others, it's obviously going to be dependent on your car setup, it may have a slight factor as well, and then obviously the weather conditions are going to play a factor too. Obviously I've tried to highlight these things where possible, but please do take note and obviously apply accordingly to the session race or conditions that you're driving in other than that thank you very much for watching the episode if you enjoyed it please give it a like and if you want to support the channel please consider subscribing and if you hit the bell notification you'll be notified each time a video goes live and you won't miss out on any future content i hope to see you back for the next one until then have fun stay safe and take care